Wall of Sound at Knotfest. Dan from Disturbed, welcome back to Australia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for stopping by Wall of Sound. This is a long time coming, just so you know. Very long, yeah. Now, uh, flashing back to the year 2016 was supposed to be your first festival appearance down under with the ill-fated Soundwave. To come back and be part of such a monumental brand like Knotfest, what's it mean to be able to jump on stage and perform for the plethora of fans that are turning out for this Uh, run? It's it's amazing. I mean, we've been coming to Australia from the very beginning of our career and, and uh, you know, obviously one, once COVID hit and set things back, I mean, and, and not being here for eight years, we were definitely uh, missing being in this part of the world and playing and, and to be asked to come back here and be part of NotFest. Great opportunity, so many great bands, yeah. good, good friends of ours, you know, we, we've known you know, Zach Wilde and the Pantera guys, for, you know, for our whole career and, yeah. you know, to be able to share the stage with them and, and then, um, you know, anytime it's a festival environment, it's always great because we get to, you know, see other bands that we don't get to see as often back home or we only see every couple of years because yeah. everybody's off doing their own thing. Yeah. So that festival kind of brings us all together. So it's pretty It's exciting. like the big family catch-ups, yeah, as everyone always sure. says. Now, I'm a big fan of Disturbed from way back in high school. We'll get to that in a second. Okay. But watching you on social media and joking the other day about Fortnite made me realise, as a dad so yeah. myself as well, you're just like the rest of us. Oh, yeah. The reason I bring up <laughs> Fortnite is because Disturbed are now part of the Fortnite universe with uh, Down With The Sickness being added to that. For yourself, does that mean anything to you or like? Um, yeah, I mean, it's great. I, I don't do it as much. I'm sure to my son, he loves it. Yeah. Um, but you know, anywhere where our music can be heard and put out there, um, you know, the more the better. Yeah. So we've had throughout our career people, whether it was on Guitar Hero or you know, any other video games and that, um, in, you know, just another outlet for our music to, yeah. to get heard. And I guess, you know, being a father yourself, do you have your son going, oh, Dad, it's lame, don't make a big deal out of it kind of thing, or is he genuinely excited to have you on there and um, tell all his friends about it? I don't, he's probably not all that impressed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he gives me a hard time. You know, he keeps he keeps me grounded, you know, yeah. well grounded. But, um, yeah, I mean, he, he loves the band. He's grew up on the road, uh, him and my daughter, out on the road as much as they could when they were younger. Yeah. You know, but now he's, you know, that 16-year-old, point in his life he's got better things to do with yeah. his buddies than Adam. You know, I, I'm good when he needs uh, when him or my daughter want tickets to see like, you know, Drake or you know, Kanye yeah, or something right, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. That's when um, you, that's when dad comes in yeah, with that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I mean they, they love you know, they grew up around rock music, so they love they love this stuff too, but they've been around it for you know their yeah. whole lives. So yeah, that when they get the perks of some of the other Acts that they're you get into. to go yeah. see Cool right. by Association. That's where that works. Right now, dating back to high school, I guess you know, with the wave of new metal that came out in the mid two thousands, we saw bands like Limp Bizkit, Corn coming through the uh, the mainstream outlets. Mm-hmm. Disturbed one of those bands that always remained the black sheep of that kind of era. Like <laughs> you didn't really get too much airplay in Australia from my recollection back then, but it became such a cool thing to be part of because, much like new metal, you were the the soundtrack for the Misfits. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, definitely, because at that time, it just, we came out at the same time as a lot of those bands. And, uh, you know, I, I know I, I don't really like labels, but it is yeah. what it is. And, and, you know, we grew up around, you know, that that, that time, too, to, to be a part of uh, a lot of those big festivals, OzFest and all that stuff we did back yeah. in the States. And a lot of great bands came from it. But, you know, our, our roots from our band, you know, we grew up on mostly classic hard rock bands. From, yeah, yeah. You know, Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, Metallica, Pantera. All, all, all the greats, stuff. all the best yeah, ones. All, yeah, all the greats. Um, but, you know, we somehow f- navigated our way through it and just kept doing the, doing what we do. We did kind of somewhat feel like the Black Sheep because it, it was a longer journey, I feel, but we've always been climbing that mountain. You yeah. know, it didn't have to come fast, and that's fine. We just we had to earn it. A lot of it was just being on the road yeah. and tour, 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 and just keep on trying to connect with that that live audience and uh, you know just built over time and releasing the albums that changed significantly but also still harked back to the early years like for example Sickness and Believe mm-hmm. two fantastic albums that come out of the gate swinging to then put out your latest album Divisive yeah. which threw back to that era like it's it for me as a fan it's like it doesn't matter what you put out because that signature sound will be there when I listen to you and your guitar solos mm-hmm. that's you that's Dan from Disturbed and nothing thank will ever get in the way of that yeah thank you well you know 
it, it's tricky. It's such a, a weird business, a tough business because it's hard to for not only bands. How many bands have like a, a one hit wonder, and or they do one or two albums, and then you know they didn't build you know that that career on the road. Yeah. They build that fan base, and just, so for any band to try to sustain it for as long as we have is very challenging. But the the, the key, in my opinion, for us is you can't. There's no secret formula. You yeah, can't exactly, just yeah. you can't guess it, and you can't just try to cater to that audience you just got to do what you got you there in the first place and that's writing for ourselves yeah where we write about things that mean something that are personal to us and it's you know that's all i'm worried about are the the, the four guys in the band of how we feel about it we yeah. can't chase it and say what do we think radio wants or back in the day what mtv wants or yeah anybody wants we just say we just write it for us yeah good and yeah. we feel if, we, if we're put, wearing our heart on our sleeve there's going to be people that they uh, you know, connect with it. They find yeah. something in, within the message they, they can relate to. And the thing that I'm loving about this as well, too, is all the dads from back in the day are now bringing their kids along. Are you noticing yeah. that with a lot more of the shows? Oh, for sure. It's great. I mean, to see that next generation of kids and, and uh, you know, we talk about it all the time because here we are, uh, you know, going on almost 25 years. Next year will be the 25th anniversary. And I know that some of those, uh, you know, moms and dads back then that were seeing us that are, like you said, coming, showing up with their kids now and bringing yeah. them out. Uh, it, it, it's great. It's it's good to know that it's, you know, going to the next generation of kids. Yeah. And as long as you keep doing what you're doing, especially when it comes to the covers. So Disturbed are a fantastic rock band in your own regard, but you've always done those interesting or left field covers, which... Attend, I guess you could say made you a household name outside of metal. So, right. Sound of Silence, Shout, right. uh, Land of Confusion. Right. Would you ever appeal to the new generation of fans who are coming along with their show, like coming along to the shows with their parents, and do like a Taylor Swift cover? Um, you know, I I really wouldn't rule out anything. I, it just really depends on. I, for me personally, it, it, you know, our, our songs are always start off with me presenting. You know, a music idea you yeah. know, to David and, and to the guys, and then David will work on a melody. When it comes to a cover, it's it's we don't just cover. It takes a long time because we really the important things to me are first the lyrics and the message. Is, yeah, is yeah, there something yeah. that we connect with lyrically on it? And then the next thing is musically. Is there something where I feel I could change it enough? I, I wouldn't want something that's too signature musically, like Stairway to Heaven. I wouldn't yeah, want to yeah, change yeah, exactly. the guitar part. Yeah, you know, I'm like, yeah. ah, I probably wouldn't want to touch that one. Yeah. yeah, I'm not saying I never would, but that that one is at the bottom of the list because it's too signature of a yeah. part. But stuff like Land of Confusion, it was very syncopated. I was able to write a riff to that and just kind of make it put our stamp on it. So, um, you know, I'm definitely open to the ideas of any genre of music. Of just, yeah. I like the challenge of trying to uh, pay tribute to something in our respects to the original songwriter. But do enough of our own, put our enough of our own stamp on yeah? yeah, yeah. And that's what you need. I mean, there's lots of people out there that do covers and it sounds exactly the same. But when you've done a cover, you've turned it into your own. And in some cases, I reckon it's better than the original. In terms of shout, I would much rather listen to yours than Tease for Fears. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you. That, uh, funny story. When we were, de we were demoing that, before we had a record deal in the late 90s, and um, we were in the studio demoing it. We were just a local band out of Chicago. And we went out to dinner, and Kurt Smith from Tears for Fears happened to be sitting next to us at a table. Oh, I mean, right. how, yeah, yeah. how coincidental is that? That it's was like, happen, yeah. like, holy shit, that's bizarre. And he came out to the studio, and like I said, we were just a local band. We're nothing. Yeah. We're like, hey, we're covering one of your songs. Would you, you know, you have any interest in hearing it? And he came to the studio right. in the middle of the night, you know, and uh, heard it. And he was pretty blown away by our interpretation of it. Yeah. So, we were pretty nervous because you're playing it for the guy who you know wrote the song yeah, and exactly, sang it. Exactly. Yeah. And we didn't want him to turn around and be like, "What the hell did you do to yeah. my song?" You know, so <laughs> that would be the worst thing. But uh, you know. But anyways, we got his blessing and it, and it was cool. You know, I'm glad that we we're glad that he liked. I'm it. glad that you did it too <laughs> because it really opened up a whole lot of uh, world for bands or people that want to get into heavier bands but weren't quite ready to take on this, the heaviness of that. If that mm -hmm. makes sense. So that kind of covering those bands and those songs is that crossover to bring people into metal world. And there's a lot of people out there, myself included who yeah. went down that path yeah. um now we're sitting in 2024 three grammy nominations eight albums in where do you foresee disturb going in terms of goal wise like is the super bowl something that you would love to achieve in the u.s i mean you know I, there's so many things i just want to keep achieving because i'm so passionate about doing it i love writing i love creating with the guys that i'm with we, we love being being on the stage and 
we still have that hunger for it. You yeah, know, there's yeah. There's that, uh, that adrenaline rush and that crowd. That's that's our drug of choice, being on that stage and yeah. that exchange. So, I mean, you know, of course, any anything that gets us on the big stage, if we're playing the Super Bowl someday, of course, that would be huge. Yeah, I, it'd I mean, be great. Yeah. I'm a huge American football fan, yeah. you know, growing up anyway, so that would be a big highlight in our career. But, you know, if that stuff doesn't happen, you know, that's, that's fine. It's not like it has to happen. Yeah. I'm just glad to be able to sustain a career this long and to keep continuing to do it. Yeah. It's a monumental achievement that Disturbed have had after all this time. You're a household name. You're changing lives. You are defining yourselves in a career that most people would normally put two albums out and then disappear and not do anything else. But the fact that you keep coming back and having that Disturbed signature sound, don't stop. Because yeah, we love you. it. Thank you. It's been way too long since we've had you in Australia. Can't wait for you to come back, Dan. It's been an yeah. absolute pleasure. Thank, thank you, you so much. It, this you. is Wall of Sound, and this is fucking Dan from Disturbed. <laughs>